Okay, uh, this is a presentation on foundation scores uh, one, and we are in unit two. And so I'd like to at least give you a perspective of uh, foundation scores uh, quickly. Just looking back, uh, foundation scores, uh, based on the, the name itself, is foundational to the Christian life. It's a basic teachings that uh, the community gives to all potential members of community, and it's the basic teachings that Christians are supposed to uh, receive. And this basic basic uh, truths that Christianity presents us is supposed to give anybody in in this world huh, to, to have a perspective of what it means to live a good life. And living a good life means following the ways of God. Unit 1 shows that, that to us. I think it showed it to you when you probably went through it maybe you missed it but it's talking about the truth that all Christians are disciples all Christians are meant to live a life that they still don't know exactly um, how to live but part of what it means to be a Christian is learning what it means to live the Christian life and it involves teachings some kind of program teachings a group of people supporting you helping you and this program is meant to be like a formation program that is geared towards any person who wants to be a disciple unit 2 then continues this reflection on the idea of discipleship and then tells us hey you you would have to recognize this huh? there are obstacles in living the Christian life and we will talk about that. The world, the flesh, and evil spirits. This unit ends with us being encouraged. Okay, guys, we will fail. We will have uh, difficulty. But don't worry. We would even have difficulty with each other. Don't worry. Uh, there is a way for us to repair and reconcile and change and repair the wrong that we've done. We, we have a way to do that. Uh, looking ahead, unit 3 would then talk about uh, something that's very important that, that Unit 2 mentioned, which is the solution to many of these challenges, is community. We will describe what it means to be part of community. And Unit 4 ends with a practical set of teachings on finances, resources, time management, because it's meant to then send us off. Okay, guys, let's do it. Let's live the Christian life. Living the Christian life also involves dealing with some practical things. Okay, let's begin Unit 2. If you believe that the Christian life is something good, then you would recognize this. Anything good requires hard work. And there are obstacles in pursuing what's good. Now, the obstacles that we would talk about today uh, is the world and the flesh. These are obstacles described in scriptures. And we will try to understand what they are. The world. Now, this this idea of the world in the in the Bible seems to have a positive description, but also a negative description. But let's begin with the positive, because are we saying that the world around us, even us, we are the obstacles? Well, basically, the answer is no, because God created the world. And he created something good. God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was the morning, the sixth day. It was very good. The world creation and everything else, because it comes from God, is good. But at the same time, in the scriptures, the word world is used in a negative way. And let's read this passage and see what uh, the first letter of John is saying. It's a warning. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but it's from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. In this passage, the world seems to be 
going against the ways of God. It seems to be the opposite of God and His ways. Because it, the, the writer is saying, do not love the world. Because if you love the world, then you do not love God. Ah, okay. So it means that there are things in the world. Values, maybe. Culture. Ways of thinking. People and their way of living. That's against the values of God or against God now I think I don't have to spend a lot of time describing this many of you who made the choice to follow the Lord I think we experience that even in social media it seems that our values are so different from others and not only that that their values seem to be against the values that we hold important as Christians so the warning is true do not love the world there are things in the world that will be against God and it's also against what is good now why warn us of these things because these things can also influence us we can end up unconsciously taking it on shaping the way we think and sometimes it's not our fault but it's it becomes a part of us and it could shape us shape us in the sense that we would take it on and it will affect the way we live and we approach life now John the writer is saying but these things are against God oh we might end up moving away from God so that's the warning what solution well the solution is community you know? being if the world and its culture and its values seem to be against God so we need to create our own environment that goes against this environment and that's Christian community we can receive teaching about how to live better life and experience a new pattern of living teachings and actually living it out with with a certain pattern of life is very good we can acquire Christian understanding so teaching and pattern of life then second acquire understanding of the way we're supposed to think and live and then living it out and freeing ourselves from this negative and anti-God values because we begin to understand what's good no? let me give you an example uh, the world influences us to be materialistic that uh, if we don't have much we, we get worried but then the proper understanding is no that the, the material things are just tools they're not a means to the end and if you think that way you become less materialistic and you end up living in a freer way without being attached to material things understanding that leads to a particular approach that frees you from being attached and living a unpeaceful life that's what understanding gives us now after we've learned and lived a pattern of life and understand what it means to live that life it's good for us to recognize that community also provides new relationships new relationships with other committed Christians is very healthy for anybody who's trying to be good no? trying to be a good Christian we need others who are also pursuing the same thing because last but not the least this kind of new relationships become a support system they support us in our Christian life because they reinforce Christian values in our life the solution to the world is community now there's another problem that's described in scriptures even if the external things influence us and we have an external support system there is another reality we need to be aware of there's something inside of us that sometimes pushes us away from God Saint Paul says this 
For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. <laughs> but if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that is in th that it is good. So it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells within me. I do not understand this. I know what's right. But I do the very thing that I hate. I do what's wrong. What's the explanation? There is sin within us. That's called the flesh. If you read scripture, you would often encounter that phrase, the flesh. It seems to be that reality inside of us. Uh, what exactly is it? All we know is it's inside of us, pushing us or making us have this tendency towards what is not good. Sin within, the way the way uh, St. Paul describes it. So what's the solution? The solution is this. First, learn to surrender. Put God at the center of your life by saying, Lord, I want you to be at the center of my life. Second, desire change. And if you desire change, expect change to happen. Have faith. God will be with you. If you get them tempted, you get tempted to, to go against God, you say, you say a prayer using the authority of God. God, in your name, Jesus, in your name, I push away this temptation. Use the authority of God. Push away those temptations. And last but not the least, approach the struggle of surrender with thanksgiving. There will be obstacles inside of us wanting to do what's good. Oh, sorry, what, what's bad and moving away from what is good. Don't listen to that. Surrender to what is good. Second important perspective is be transformed. No. There will be healing prayer in community and it's a blessing that we constantly ask our brothers and sisters to pray for us. The Spirit will enable us to make good choices. Believe that. And last but not the least, you know, Put away grudges or negative thoughts. But but some people do this. They actually list their grudges and their negative thoughts once in a while when they're feeling a lot of stress. And then when they write it, they crumple it and then they throw it away. I think that's symbolic of what we need to do constantly in our heads. When there are negative thoughts and grudges, let go. Let go. And if these negative things and the sin continue to come back, the final advice is this. Be patient. Persevere. We are all a work in progress. And it takes time to change. There is a flesh within us that we need to conquer. But God has sent His Spirit to change us. And we need to just continually work hard to pursue what is good. So, we've talked about the obstacles of the world. And the solution is community. There is something inside of us that persists to move away from God. Let's surrender. Let's be transformed. And let's be patient. Because the Lord is at work in our lives. And He will continue to change us. End of uh, presentation. If you have time, I think uh, this will be a good discussion uh, to have. And you can use that as your discussion uh, uh, starter. Thank you very much.